Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I can't believe it's already December and in a few weeks we will be rolling into 2023 and I don't know about you guys, but 2022 was kind of a roller coaster ride for me. There were points in the year that time was moving so slow, painfully, agonizingly and excruciating slow and then I guess when you went into the tail end of the year, it was a roller coaster ride. And I guess I wanted to take time to show my appreciation for the past year and the journey that I had with you guys. I originally intended to, you know, use YouTube as an outlet for a very niche type of hobby and um, I went through a very rough time at the start of the year and what helped me with my emotional well-being was actually journaling and writing and yeah, the, the love for fountain pens and fountain pen inks. So I just want to take this time to thank each and every one of you who has joined me in this journey of journaling and writing and planning. So this video is a purely emotional there's no logic behind it whatsoever and i just want to take time to give appreciation to the things that not just spark joy but kept me in a wonderful state of sanity if you would allow me to call it that so what i will be sharing with you are fountain pens that mean so much to me that i put emotional value over it more than anything else and of course the things that you know kept me happy for lack of a better term so i want to start with fountain pens and the first one is a lamy safari with the lion friends collaboration you don't see this often in my videos, mainly because despite of its extra fine nib, it still writes a bit uh, broad as compared to my other Japanese extra fine nibs. I wouldn't let go of this mainly because it was a gift to me by my mom. So when I was starting out with fountain pens, she, she wanted to give something to me and she just let me choose whatever i want as long as it was yellow yellow is my mom's favorite color and she also knows sally from line friends so i think this was the perfect gift that she gave to me and it also was an affordable pen considering the other brands out there so in the times that i reach for it it kind of it really sparks joy and it makes me happy and sunny and warm. Those are the feelings that I associate with this pen. So that's the first one. The second one you always see in my videos. <laughs> and this is the Momlong Meisterstuck 144. This is a vintage piece. And I got this from my dad. He received this in 1993 as sort of a retirement present from his old company. And he doesn't use fountain pens. And last year when he saw or he heard that I was starting my fountain pen collection, he immediately stood up, went to his wardrobe and got this for me. And... This used to be in the medium nib, but I had it tuned and reground to an oblique, a reverse oblique nib by a nib smith. And now it just writes beautifully for me and probably for other left-handed people. The next one is another Mont Blanc and this is the 145 Meisterstück Le Petit Prince with the brown resin and the platinum trim. I had this uh, nib changed to an extra fine so 
I had to wait an extra four months for the nib to be changed in Singapore. However, when I started using this, it was skipping. So after this video, I plan to bring this to the Mont Blanc uh, service center in Rustans. I still have the warranty and I've been faithfully using Mont Blanc inks because that's the requirement for it for the warranty to still be valid. But I really like uh, the thinness, the extra fine uh, nib of Mont Blanc. It's just that maybe it just needs some adjustment or tuning because it skips. It's driving me crazy. But of course, this is something that's given to me by my husband. So yeah, maybe just a few adjustments, then it's it'll probably write like a dream. Another one is a latest gift from my husband. It's the Sailor Professional Gear Slim. It's in the classic white with the silver trim. And he got this for me on our daughter's third birthday. So he also gives me something during our daughter's birthday to celebrate um, me giving birth to her. And I know that's not a common practice. Of course, if it's your birthday, a lot of attention is really on you. But my husband, he's just so sweet. And he has always been supportive of my fountain pen journey. And he knows that it helped me emotionally <laughs> during those tough times when you were in lockdown. So this one. And the last one is a platinum meteor in the coral. I won this in an auction in our Facebook group. Um, one of our members needed help and needed to raise funds in cash. And it was for a purpose that I really believed in, that I strongly believed in. And knowing that the price of a platinum meteor is super affordable it's perfect for those who are new to fountain pens they auctioned a lot of these pens and i think they were able to raise uh, enough money so i'm just very happy and glad that i was part of that cause and it's coral it's orange i don't have an orange fountain pen it's so whimsical it's so unlike me for the inks that i use which is blue you know it's yeah, it's a really nice addition to my collection. So these are the five sentimental, emotionally charged fountain pens that I have in my collection. These pens will not leave my collection anytime soon. I plan to enjoy them until I can't write anymore or if I decide to give it to my daughter or a family member who will appreciate it and love it more, then I am more than happy to part ways. With these pens okay so those are the fountain pens and I will be sharing with you two things that I'm extremely grateful for for the past year actually uh, almost two years already and these are my Hobonichi Techos the first one you are not a stranger to it is the five-year Techo so if you are a subscriber and you've always followed my videos you know that this five-year Techo is a milestone uh, journal for my daughter. And I do write-ups, I post photos, mentos for that day. And to me, it has also been therapeutic because not only I get to look back on how my child developed from a dependent, clingy, breastfed baby to an independent, strong-willed, nature-loving little girl. So, and yeah, that, that really brings up a lot of memories, the things that I've gone through. I've had a bit of postpartum as well, but this really helped me, you know, write down my feelings, 
and just learn to enjoy the moment and not dread it. I know that I'm doing this for my daughter, but, but what most people probably don't know is that this has helped me more than it has helped her at this point in time. So I really enjoy writing in my five-year techo. For me, it's not a chore. Sometimes it just takes commitment and you need to have a strong sense of purpose for starting a five-year techo, which is really a big deal for some people. And the last one that I will share is a techo cousin. So this is my cousin for this year. And at first, I wanted to be very structured with how I use my techos. Like, this has to be strictly for work. Or this has to be strictly for journaling and thoughts and feelings and memory keeping. I realized that I reach for this regardless of the need. So, for example, if I need to write a lengthy entry and I need to pour my heart and soul into it and I know that the A6 is not enough, I reach for this and I use the blank pages. I just put washi over the date if it doesn't apply. And sometimes memories are here. And there were also times when I was in dire need of work. And one day I just went through LinkedIn and applied like crazy. And I wrote all of my applications here. And I know it wasn't, this wasn't meant for work or work-related matters but at that time it felt right to put all my applications there and check the status if i got rejected i had to cross it out it was painful but i had to do it until finally the perfect job found me and looking back it's also nice to see how you've grown and how you've matured all these all this time and this has been a constant companion whether it was for work whether it was for myself so yeah the cousin has it's large enough for me to put in my work and my personal life but at the same time i don't see this as chaos or unorganized or messy for me, because I was the one who wrote this, I made this book, My Life in 2022. It created a special connection with me. And it was hard to separate the work me and the personal me and the family me and the journaling me. So I just decided not to put a lot of structure and control and it really helped me. It really helped me through these weeks and months. So these are the things that I am grateful for for the past year. For this year, 2022, these are the things that I have an emotional connection with. Um, these are the things that have brought me sanity and have kept me sane. And for 2023, there will be a lot of changes personally. And I hope to share that with you. Um, in the coming videos. I hope you can put in the comments below what things you are grateful for this year. It doesn't have to be fountain pens or journals, but basically, what are the things that kept you sane? What are things that you are grateful for? <laughs> I'd also love to know about them. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, it just takes a second or two and if you enjoy these types of videos, I have more content for you in my channel. So, thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you in my next video. Thank you and have a wonderful December. Bye guys!